Okay, welcome to lesson six. In this lesson, we're going to talk through zoning and space planning fundamentals, an essential step in turning the building mass into a thoughtful and functional arrangement of the space. Now that we've outlined our massing layer, we now have to start defining the spatial relationships within that mass. I will show you the rayon zoning tools and as we go, I'll talk you through the different techniques in order to change zoning boundaries, renaming, adding custom colors, two spaces, and also being able to generate automatic tags with square meter counts for each area, making it really easy to visualize and calculate areas and zones quickly. So it's important to note that at this point, the mass and the zoning will be quite a sketchy and iterative process. It'll be a lot of kind of push pulling between the zones, trying to meet the requirements of the client, and also the massing will begin to adapt and evolve as we begin to identify some of these spaces. So as you can see, once again, I have the site map locked in the background. And as you can see, I've got a simple outline of the mass just to make it very simple and easy uh, for us to kind of work into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the mass. I'm going to right click and I'm going to lock that into place. Now, the next thing that's going to be really important is we're going to create a new layer. So we're going to create a layer called zones. And so everything that we draw on this layer, as you can see, it, as it's activated, everything will be assigned to this layer. Now, if we come over to this right hand side, I have the room requirements that were identified in the brief. And this is going to be really important for us to work between as we're defining these zones and spaces, um, just to kind of refer to the areas that are required by the client. And I also have a key down this right hand side. And we're going to approach this very similarly in the way that we did the massing and that we're going to create a saved style and start applying it to the zones that we are drawing. So the first thing that we're going to do is head over to the key. I'm going to select the shape. I'm going to head over to the styles tab over the right hand side, and I'm going to save the style once again. So living spaces, and I'm going to do that throughout all of the room requirements. So we have some styles that we can use as we're beginning to annotate now to begin drawing and identifying these zones, we're going to use the zone tool in the software. So if you come down here to the bottom tab and we click this elements button, you can see that we have a item called zones. And as you begin to draw the zone by clicking the points, make sure you enclose it. You will see that it automatically applies a tag, uh, a name tag and also the square meter calculation to that zone. And if you select the zone, you can come up to the right hand side here and we could call this living spaces. And you can see the tag changes that it doesn't say living spaces, that says living speckers. <laughs> um, and as you can see, as we click into the zone and we adjust it, the square meters will also adjust. It's a really nice, easy tool. And it's really useful that you can have an automatic tag applied to it. So that's just to show you how the zones work. Now let's begin drawing them. So the design logic of the building is that we have, as we mentioned in the previous lesson, two clear zones. We have a kind of more private living zone down this right or this left hand side flank. On this right hand side, uh, we have more of a public zone where this is gonna be a garage back of house space. Uh, so when the vehicles pull into the driveway, they can drive straight into the garage. So we've already begun to identify potential living areas, back of house areas, garage areas. Um, and obviously we have this main entrance zone here, which is almost this arrival space with this slice geometry, a porch area really, which is going to be a central circulation space for these rooms, for these flanks of the building. So first things first, we have this zone here, which essentially is a kind of circulation zone. So we have, So as we enter the property, as I've mentioned, this is the arrival point. You have the opportunity to move in any direction. Now, obviously, the living zone isn't going to take up all of this space because as you can see, that is 82 square meters, which is a significant room way over uh, the required by the client. But we could break down this space to any additional rooms that we might require, such as a utility cupboard or a toilet. So upon arrival into the property, we have a circulation space which could potentially 
extend out in this direction as we would like to probably have an internal access into the garage. So if we then make this space here a potential garage, and maybe we could follow that geometry. And then we also have this kind of pocket of space here, which is um, an opportunity really to explore the views over in this direction and also to create some, maybe some outdoor area associated with this zone. So maybe this could be a useful point for an office space um, with nice, beautiful, expansive views over the landscape. So we could maybe define a zone here as maybe, I mean, it's a pretty generous office, but that could be one to use. An additional feature to this arrival space could be a stair feature. So obviously we'll need access to the upper mass, which sits above this zone. It's a little bit tricky now to place a stair in, his, in this area. We don't really want the stair in the living quarter. So maybe we could make a, a kind of feature of this area and maybe a, an atrium space, maybe a double height space. This could potentially be a, a kind of additional hallway and stair. So we're beginning to identify that we have this central core point. We have a point of access through here into the garage. So we have an internal entrance. We have potentially an access through into an office, uh, which could be quite a nice kind of private area where it's quite quiet out the back of the property. And maybe we could utilize this outdoor area here with views over the landscape. We've identified that this could be a point where a stair could go up to the upper floor and we can make a feature of it, maybe breaking through um, the floor and making a kind of nice atrium space and emphasizing this arrival point as you come into the property. And on this left hand side, obviously, we have just a huge living space that we need to break down into obviously living, uh, dining and kitchen space. So I think initially you probably would want a kind of back of house space at the back here, which could be um, maybe given to a utility room, which we could maybe identify as a zone out the back here. So we'll call that back of house space. We then probably don't need this living space to be so big, big and we can reduce it down to roughly about 70 square meters. So therefore we could have maybe a kitchen running along this back wall. Um, as this is kind of embedded into the landscape, there won't be any windows out of this direction. So we could use the kind of utility cupboards and the and the fridge and the oven, etc., related to the kitchen along this back wall and make use of that. And this zone here, this pocket could be a WC. As you enter the building, you could come into a nice WC as you arrive. If we begin to annotate this drawing a little bit, we can potentially describe this arrival point into the scheme and this entrance into these spaces. And we can link the two like so, and we'll change this stroke. This is far too heavy. Let's just do maybe. And a useful tool to mention at this point is that if you select your polyline, you come down and you select explode or type X. You can break that polyline down into individual lines. You can come down, we can draw an arc and to begin to identify these kind of these points of movement and access. And we'll also match that to this tool here. So that's also something that would be worth mentioning. You can head over to this pick style, select a style of your choice and it will match it. And if we then select those lines, come down and click join, we then have that line joined back together. So just to spend some time cleaning up those lines and annotating this drawing, you can see here that we have this kind of clear circulation route. We have the central space linking the spaces and also this utility room out the back left corner could also have access onto the driveway. So if you need to take the bins out or anything that you need to get out of the property out the back through the back of the living space, you could potentially take that out the back door. Now, when we start looking at the upper floor, we're going to first begin with the circulation point that we've identified for the hallway and stair. And a useful way of making sure that you have them aligned, you can select the items, hold down Alt and Shift, and drag them straight down. And if you have your site plan, and if you have your upper level directly below, you can just drop it straight into place. Potentially then we have an access point along the back here, which could be a kind of 
a main circulation route on the upper level because we want to maximize the window space on this south side of the building in order to maximize views over the landscape. So if we have the circulation space on the north side of the building, then we're obviously maximizing those views. So we'll change that to circulation. Now, therefore, based on this geometry, we have kind of two ends of the upper floor that we can begin to fill. And now it's just a case of identifying, okay, which is going to be the best point for a master bedroom and which could potentially be uh, a better point for uh, the secondary bedroom and the bathroom, etc. So if we have this big hallway and stair kind of entrance point, then maybe on this right hand side here, we can begin to identify potentially a master bedroom that is maximizing essentially 360 views or 180 views, not quite 360, over the landscape. So you have views out the back here and then you have views out the front. And maybe this could be identified as the master bedroom. And then on this left hand side, we have potentially two rooms and a bathroom for both. So you could have a room on this end. And these could be bedrooms. Roughly speaking. Now, once again, this would be a process of iterating through, working through these sizes and adjusting them. As you can see here, the master bedroom probably should be slightly bigger. So therefore, maybe we could reduce this living space here and maybe we could increase this master bedroom and suggest that maybe this bathroom comes down because we want to make sure that we're getting light into the bathroom we want a nice significant size bathroom and then we could even have potentially a walk-in wardrobe at this point here so you have a kind of access route through here into the master bathroom through a walk-in wardrobe space. And we can also add some circulation routes and some annotation until we arrive at something like this, which I think works fairly well. Once again, we are placing more emphasis on the master bedroom, make sure that it's a much more generous space, creating that hierarchy between uh, the alternative bedrooms and secretary bedrooms. We have a dresser room and ensuite, so you have this link between the two. We have the central stair that then links this circulation space to this end bedroom, which could potentially have maybe a, a little balcony or something on this um, on this lower level. And then this smaller third bedroom with a shared bathroom. So although this is highlighted here as an ensuite, we could actually potentially just adjust that. Like so. Now that is identifying some of these zones in response to the massing spaces and the volumes that we begin to identify and start creating some architectural geometry. We've now begun to fill out those spaces and identify that there is this clear main circulation route in the center of the property where you have this arrival point where we could have these double height spaces that are also going to link all of these spaces together on the lower ground and the upper ground with the bedrooms, bathrooms, living spaces, garage, etc. And now moving forward into the next lesson, we can really start bringing these drawings to life, start defining wall thicknesses, adding openings, layouts, and really start defining some of these areas and zones.